Here we are. This is it. Uh, yes. Not exactly one of those Manhattan skyscraper offices, all chrome and ferns and space-age telephones, but I did warn you. Oh, yes, you did warn me. I hope I have not called at an inopportune moment. No, not at all. Lunchtime's the best time of day to look at an office. Yes. Building's empty. Oh, they run out of here like someone called fire. A thriving hub of activity becomes a ghost building in five minutes. Wonder if there's not a whole new set of people who come in here, lead lives and carry on business in the lunch hour. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we'd never know about it. Please forgive the state that it's in. It, it hasn't been in use in some time. Still, all it needs is a facelift, a duster and a strong arm. Ah, oh, you're making my point for me. Oh, it doesn't matter about any of that. I'll, I'll have the window open anyway. Well, it overlooks the street as you want it. It's not very crowded down there. Will this office be suitable for your purposes, Mr... Oh, I am sorry. I, I didn't ask your name. Rude of me. Drummond. Yes, the office will be fine. Just fine. The previous holders of the lease were theatrical agents. There was always a steady procession of eager young men and women parading in and out of here. Bright, eager faces. They all looked alike, the same burning intensity. You know what I mean? They're going to make it no matter what. No matter how many cattle calls, how many drafty rehearsal rooms they go to takes a special kind of understanding. Of yourself. How long have you been in the country? You have a direct line to the immigration authorities, Miss Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I noticed your accent. Accents travel. You find them everywhere. Born in Glasgow, lived in Santa Monica, USA, Cultural shock. Huh. I've been traveling around in an RV. Um, oh, a recreational vehicle. Driven right the way across the United States of America. Right the way across. It's the only way to really see the country, you know. Oh, yes, yes. Sweating humanity. Hatred, bigotry. All still there, you know. It's still there. Dipping with magnolia blossoms, of course. And the cultural East, with its nasal superiority. Hmm? Slums. Mind you, you find slums everywhere. Every city you go, you find slums. Decay. Gaunt faces. Hungry eyes. All searching for something. And what would that be? Each other. Oh. Strangers are the uh, the best companions. It's when you uh, when you start making friends that you uh, you find the rot sets in. Father, lover, sister, friend, wife. They're all emotional bastards. It's better to be like us, you see. Companions in mutual ignorance. <laughs> Partners in a simple business transaction, that's all. <laughs> what business are you in? Sorry, business? Well, I just wondered, I mean, you don't look... Oh, I, I don't look like an ordinary businessman, you mean? <laughs> I, uh, I'm in no dark suit or tie, and my shoes are unpolished. I... I dress for myself, sweetheart, for myself. Well, fine. Yes. It's almost lunchtime, Mr. Drummond. Oh, yes, of course. Twelve o'clock, of course. Now, if this office is suitable, perhaps we can... Then, of course, perhaps I don't want to rent an office at all. Perhaps I'm just lonely. Strange city. Where do I go? With whom do I talk? Hmm? Let me tell you something. I stood outside every single real estate agent in this area before I came in to see you. See, and what made our agency so special? 
You? Me? Yes. I was watching through, through that window for a long, long time. And I think you must have sensed that, because suddenly you looked up at me. And I, I wanted to know what your reaction was going to be. Do you, do you remember what it was? Not really. You smiled at me. Oh. <laughs> and then I saw your name on the table there in gold letters. Margaret Lord. Very aristocratic, very like yourself. Yes. And then you talk to me. Can I help you? <laughs> I mean, I, I could hardly say, um, well, I mean, you know, you, you, you look like a very nice person, could have a few moments of your time. I mean, I could hardly say that, could I? And then, I, I, then it was then I suddenly realized that you had an office for rent. Excuse me, um, I see that you have an office for rent just down the route from here. May I see it, please? Oh. <laughs> so there you are, you see. Confession. End of a lonely but honest confession. An apartment would have been much more credible. I might not have wondered about you at all. If you wondered about me, why did you bring me here? Oh, I wasn't sure. You weren't frightened? that I might make advances towards you? I've been advanced on before. We have singles bars full of sweating, desperate executives. They all have as many lines as the phone company. Now, I am a big girl, and I have heard them all. Did you come into the agency just for some company? I came into the agency because its name is on a board outside this building. Well, yes, you did seem very anxious to see this particular office. No, Miss Lord. To see from this particular office. Oh. Yes, well. Now, if we could... Look. See, people are all the same. You know what I mean? It doesn't change. No matter what city you are in, people are all the same. Arrogant. They don't believe that anything could interrupt their little lives or stop them in their tracks. Not even death. I mean, there's, there's terrorist bombs going on all over the world, but it's still... Uh, how about lunch on Wednesday, dear? Hmm? That's why we invented religion, you see, God. An afterlife. Which is too important. Just to die. To disappear. I mean, there must be something more Something more than that for us, you see. It's a game, isn't it? Well, if you'd like to return to the agency with me, we can finalize the details of the lease. How long would you be taking it for? Usually a year's lease is mandatory, but we are letting offices now for six months. And would even consider a three-month lease. Just for today. Just until lunch. You can't rent an office in the morning. Why not? Because we don't operate on a daily basis. Well, I won't need it after. After what? After lunch. Now look, Mr. Drummond. I am very busy and I do Excuse have me. other clients. D does that lock? What? The door behind me. Does it lock? Is this it? Why are you locking us in? Is this... It. Find it yourself. Oh, I see. Process of elimination, is it? Yes. That is it. I was wrong. You don't seem uh, particularly frightened. Why should I be? You haven't timed your move very well, have you? Now, you take one more step towards me, and I'm going to scream until enough people come to break that door down. If anybody comes near that door, if anybody tries to break that door down, if anyone tries to stop me, I will kill them. Kill them? Kill them. And me? I don't want to harm you. I don't want to touch you. I don't even want to see you. I just need you here to be with me. That's all. Just for a while. 
And then when it's ended, when it's over, you can go and no harm will come to you. I promise you that. Unless, of course, you try to escape. Unless, of course, you try to stop me. And if you do try to stop me, then I will kill you also. Now, you understand that? At the end of what? Stop you from doing Do what? you understand that? I won't make a move. Not for anything. All right? Well, that's fine. That's just fine. down there. There'll be fat women with shopping bags and screaming kids. And businessmen walking across to the bar to drink their liquid lunch. <laughs> I mean, it should be crowded down there. I mean, don't you... Don't you see? No, I don't. What time do you make it? Uh, it's uh, about quarter to twelve. Not about! Exactly what bloody time do you make it? Thirteen minutes, too. There you are, then. Thirteen minutes. See? We should just have to wait thirteen minutes, right? It'll be twelve o'clock. And be crowded down there. What's going to happen at twelve o'clock? down there are going to find their arrogant, self-important little lives somewhat interrupted. I'm going to fire into them. You can't. What do you mean I can't, Margaret? You're going to stop me? You came all the way here to no, 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 no. No, oh, it doesn't have to be here. Could have been anywhere. Nationalities don't change attitudes. Hey, I like, I like what you said about actors, by the way. You know, uh, cattle calls. <laughs> cattle. The streets, any street, anywhere. You slaughter cattle, don't you? Talking about killing human beings. It's the same thing. Why? There must be a reason. Reason? For killing human beings? Well, why should there be? Any more than there's a reason for killing anything else. Hmm? My father owned a gun shop in Glasgow. Oh, guns. No, they were guns. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not pawn shop guns, you know, that you buy in the United States of America for a couple of bucks and then go out and knock over some liquor store, you know, and pump a couple of rounds into some poor bastard running it, some poor bastard with unraveling sleeves and bleary eyes and wine-stained shirt, you know, not, not one of those kind of guns, no, no, no. These were beautiful, beautiful. I used to go hunting, my father and I, hunting for deer. I used to stalk them side by side, father and son, father and son. Him holding the gun, he was running along by his side. And then suddenly, we'd see one of those, those beauties standing there, stock still. His head up, listening, just listening, feeling our presence. And my father, he would take aim. He'd make no more sound or movement in doing that than we had done in approaching the deer. But it would know. Margaret, I swear to you, it would know in that instant, it would know that his life was in danger because it would spring. Spring away, and at that very second, it would be too late for that wee laddie because my father would fall there, and the animal would fall there. Bullet in his heart. Right in his heart. Ah. Oh. I tell you, there was something about that, Margaret. There was something about that that was marvelous. My father used to say that killing a human being 
couldn't have any satisfaction at all because uh, it, it would never know what's hit it. But I, I, I thought, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, that surely would make it even more satisfying. For that very reason. A sniper is just a hunter with a human target. They're not targets. They're people. Mark, they are targets. They're like deer or grouse or those tiny little ducks made of clay that you find in a shooting gallery. You just have to knock them over. That is all that is important. Don't you see? Yes. Yes, I do see. Mind you, you have to start early. Of course. See, I was, uh, what? Oh, I was 16 when I got my first gun. My father gave it to me, of course. He said that I was old enough now to uh, kill. And after the first one, you see, the rest become easy. He shot a deer, Margaret. And, and he told me to stay where I was while he went towards the deer who was in some rocks. Now, I followed him. I followed him through my sight, the sight in my gun, you see. And for one simple moment there, it seemed so easy just to squeeze the trigger and watch him fall with a bullet in his back to see his shattered bones. My own father. What happened? Uh, he turned around, he saw me there pointing the gun at him. Eh? <laughs> well, I mean, he gave me hell. He gave me hell. He, he swore to me that I would never be allowed to kill anything. Unless I learned never to point a gun at a human being. Never, ever let your gun pointed be at anyone. Never, ever let your gun pointed be at anyone. That's Scottish, that. That is Scottish. That is a Scottish saying, Margaret, that is. I thought, well, <laughs> you know, what the hell. I just walked away, you know. And I apologised. But, Margaret, what is the difference? I mean, the people... Walking down in that street, they're not hunters or killers. They're just, just people. I, I remember that day I almost killed my father. I think of that day all the time. And I thought of it right up to the day he died. How did he die? You won't believe it. it was a shooting accident. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what kind of an accident? <laughs> oh, oh, you you think that I killed him? Is that it, eh? Is that the way it happened? Did, did you murder your father? Murder? Who's talking about murder, sweetheart? I'm not talking about murder. I'm talking about hunting. That's not murder. Did you? He was cleaning his gun at home in the garage. It was his first rule to me. Always make sure that your gun is unloaded before you clean it. Always make sure. I mean, you said you only have to be careless once. That's all, just once. That's what he used to say. I remember when I heard the shot before he has not unloaded the gun. How about that? The fat bastards forgot to unload the gun. But you see, he had cleaned his gun. It was my gun he was cleaning. That was a sort of fatherly gesture. I mean, I was his son and like father, like son. I. I always unloaded it. I always unloaded my gun. But that particular day, I just, I hadn't, I don't know why. I just, I'd forgotten. Yeah. And you, of course, you should have checked it. Why the hell didn't he check it? 
Do you want to get yourself killed? You're going to kill those people on the street. What's the difference? The difference is that they are down there and you are up here. And you are not a target yet. It's not 12 o'clock yet. It isn't time. You can't do it before it's time. Well, what time is it? <laughs> right. You've got seven minutes to persuade me. To persuade me not to do it, eh? You don't want me to fire down into them, do you? No! Well, then give me some reasons. Give me one reason, one good reason why I shouldn't do it. And I'll walk away from it. It's up to you, Margaret. Their lives are in your hands. <laughs> <laughs>